The Pacific Fruit Express was founded on December 7th, 1906 as a joint venture between the Union Pacific and Southern Pacific Railroads. It began operation October 1st, 1907 with a fleet of 6,600 refrigerator cars built by the American Car and Foundry Company. In 1923, the Western Pacific Railroad joined the venture by leasing its own fleet of 2,775 new reefers to the Pacific Fruit Express. They were painted in standard PFE colors with only WP heralds on the cars instead of the paired UPSP markings. The WP cars were all retired in late 1950 among the last wooden reefers in the PFE's fleet. Western Pacific ended its partnership with the PFE in late 1967 and joined the Fruit Growers Express instead. Pacific Fruit Express's assets were divided between the Union Pacific and Southern Pacific when the company was split April 1st, 1978. The Southern Pacific is in fact now a Union Pacific subsidiary. On September 1st, 2022, the Union Pacific closed the final Fruit Express shop in North Platte, Nebraska at Bailey Yard. All personnel and equipment were transferred to the North Platte Service Unit Car Department. The North American Reefer Car completely changed how Americans ate by making the once thought exotic foods commonplace in American homes by using ice to transport these exotic foods. The first ice to be used in reefer cars was actually pond or lake water that was harvested in the winter and kept in ice houses to be preserved as long as possible into the warmer months. Pond ice continued to be used well into the 21st century before being replaced by mechanically frozen ice. No matter the origin, this ice was added to all rail cars about every 100 miles during the warmest parts of their journey. These reefer cars were not only given priority over other freight, they were often pulled by high horsepower fast locomotives. For instance, the Union Pacific, who used Challengers, then Big Boys, and finally, Generation 1, 2, and 3 gas turbine electric locomotives, or GTELs. The need for speed was initially essential due to the quality of the reefers that were being built. The producers would often complain that they never knew if a shipment would arrive fresh or spoiled. It always felt like a roll of the dice for such expensive transportation costs. In 1906, the passage of the Pure Food and Drug Act put in place a food research laboratory. The USDA hired chemist Dr. Mary Pennington as chief of this food laboratory. Due to ongoing challenges with food spoilage on train cars, she eventually stepped in and studied the chemical breakdown of chicken as time passed and temperature increased. She was able to determine chemically when chicken would degrade to the point where it was no longer viable for human consumption, and what was needed to keep it above that point and for how long. She also discovered that early reefer cars were designed with all sorts of non-standardized insulation, from charcoal to sawdust or just air. During this discovery, it was realized that many reefer cars were that in name only, they were just box cars with the name reefer car stamped on the side with no insulation at all. This became a huge issue as product would often spoil before reaching its, de its destination. This resulted in what would become standards for all reefer cars during World War I going forward, detailing out the minimum standards for insulation, flooring, and ice bunkers, presenting us with the beautifully detailed cars that we have here today. Let's go ahead and take a closer look. All right, a view from the top here where we've got some, some legible writing there, which is very difficult to see without my glasses, but zoomed in uh, three times, we're able to see this. But these levers do operate on every hatch. Again, be very careful. And one of these, I think it's this one, has the volume control. There you go, you have the separate volume control. Can I turn that with this? Yeah, you can turn it. There you go. It actually seems like it's loose. It is. Look at that. I thought this thing was perfect, and it turns out we have, uh, I don't know. Yeah, that's definitely, that's got to be reattached. So I'm going to have to open this up. <laughs> We're uh, 0 for 10 here for Lionel items that I have to fix upon arrival. I was really hoping uh, for $500. Such an intricate set was uh, was flawless, um, but that's okay. Again, we'll work on it. I hope they improve. Uh, as I'm being told, this is just what I should come to expect. So we'll continue to look at the top here. Uh, it's interesting. 
it looks like from how well I'm zoomed in, it looks like the top of this is dusty, uh, but I can't see that with the naked eye. So that's quite interesting. Uh, I did just take this out of the package and it, it was well sealed. So we got our, four, our, our two rear hatches here that open up as well. I haven't opened these, so let's take a look together. So. All right, and nothing inside there until you put the ice in there, which we will do shortly. Um, the, uh, the dialogue that these cars offer is, uh, is phenomenal. Um, I, I don't plan on using it much when I'm just sitting here by myself. Eh, you know, I might, you know, there's, there's days when I want, might want to do some prototypical operations, but, uh, you know, the, 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 the kids really love it. I don't have any kids, uh, but I do have, uh, friends that have children and, uh, my other half, her, uh, her nephew loves this stuff. So to sit here and play the, the ice loading and then the fruit loading and then the unloading and going through the whole stage and moving it a little bit, let, we're, we're going to do that here in a second. Uh, the kids love that stuff. So we'll get the track powered up and see what this thing sounds like. All right, so here we go. We got the cab one L remote. Uh, sorry, I don't have a cab two. Kind of hard to come by. Can't wait till the cab three comes out. Uh, so here's what we're looking at. So number one on the remote is uh, master volume control for legacy. So again, you have the volume that's inside the, uh, the reefer hatch up here. Uh, if you're going to be doing conventional or, or any other operation. So that allows you to control the, uh, the amount of rail sounds that you hear and things like that. But if you're using Legacy, you go ahead and keep the, the master volume inside or keep the dial turned up all the way and then you'll just use the remote. So I have mine turned up all the way. Uh, number two or button number two on the remote activates the uh, flat wheel sequence. That only uh, activates while the car is moving. So, and we will go through that while the car is moving uh, to demonstrate it, but you can activate it and then you'll hear the thump, thump, thump until you stop. And uh, then the, somehow the maintenance crew is going to fix the flat wheel <laughs> on this car. Uh, not the most prototypical thing, but it's cool. The kids will love it. Uh, number three on the remote is the loading sequence. Uh, and then number uh, six is the unloading sequence. Number four is volume down. Number five is uh, the uh, the mute button. So let's just go through, we'll do number three. And there's a short sequence and a long sequence. So we'll do the short one right now. Okay, let's get those cars ready for ice. Watch your feet, that ice is heavy. All right, we're good. Next stop, produce. So move it a little bit. And then if you wanted to simulate this like I'll do with the kids, I'll move it from a, you know, an ice depot over to where the, the fresh fruit is at. But in this, in this demonstration, we're just gonna move it an inch. Let's load those perishables. Stack them up, one more layer. Okay guys, close it up. This load is at least. All right, so we got all the perishables loaded. Now we're gonna top it off with some ice. Let's refill those ice buckers. Keep that ice coming. Okay, guys. Close it up. This load is at least. All right, and lastly, we're going to press and hold three for the uh, long sequence. All right, let's refill those ice buckers. Any of these cars seem to be cut? Keep that ice coming. Okay, guys, let's move. Close it up. We're done here. Close it up. Let's go. All right, so for the long sequences, they're infinite. You can hold that button as long as you want. I'm not going to put you through that. Uh... Thank <laughs> you. 
All right, so that's an extended sequence with no audio. Uh, that was quite the surprise. I wasn't expecting that one. So now we'll do the unloading sequences. Okay, guys, let's move. Get those perishables unloaded. Make sure that Reaper is empty before you close it up. Is that car empty? Yes, empty. That's how we do it. Fresh produce all year round. Empty this car first, guys. Stack those over there, buddy. Is that car empty? Yes, empty. Good. Next one, here we go. Make sure that reaper is empty before you close it up. Make sure that reaper is empty before you close it up. Is that car empty? Yes, empty. All right, get those cars cleaned out. Hurry up. Come on. Another on-time delivery. All right, so that's your uh, your extended unloading sequence. And uh, since I only have the, uh, the Cab 1L remote, I don't have the buttons here next to zero uh, on either side. So I can't enable or disable the rail clatter sounds or the uh, the curve grind sounds. So I'll have to wait till whenever the cab three comes out for that. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna back this up a little bit. And I'm just gonna manually do this. So I'm gonna see if I can uh, enable the uh, flat wheel sequence and then uh, we'll stop and, and, uh, and let the guys somehow fix a flat wheel. Flat wheel fixed, you can head out. All right, so this really strong gentleman, in just a few seconds, we're able to fix that flat wheel. All right, I get it, it's uh, unrealistic, but uh, it's fun, it's fun for the kids. So uh, what we're we'll do now is, uh, We'll get uh, 4014 hooked up here, and uh, we'll do a running session. And uh, don't mind this setup down here. I just moved from the uh, living room down to the basement, and uh, I have uh, placed an order for Miani Benchwork. So that is going to be a whole other video in the future. But uh, we'll be able to get this off the carpet and get it on an actual uh, layout. Uh, the room down here for the, uh, the table is going to be 24 by 14. Uh, hopefully hope to have a roundhouse in the middle uh, or turntable with a roundhouse and uh, again that'll be another video to come so this is uh, video number two in the vision line series of four videos at the conclusion of the fourth video in the series you'll see exactly which item is going to be given away but I will tell you I'll give you a little bit of a hint every video of the four is working towards what that item is uh, it's going to be something paid for out of my pocket while we try to get closer and closer to that 1,000 subscriber mark. Right now, we're at 339, 339 subscribers. I'd like to get as close as possible to 1,000, if not over 1,000, so go ahead and spread this video to uh, your friends, other people in your club, clubs, and uh, uh, I appreciate the support.